You know, the flame metals would not displace copper from copper to tetrasulfate 6 solution. Now, for a metal not to displace copper, it means that that metal is less reactive than copper. And how do you know a metal that is less reactive than copper? It will be the metal that is lower than copper in the reactivity series. And of the options given here, the only metal here that is lower than copper in the reactivity series and less reactive than copper is silver. Okay, let's move. Question 40. Question 40 says, which of the following compounds produces a precipitate with aqueous ammonia but would not dissolve when excess ammonia is added? Okay, so this has to do with um, qualitative analysis test for cut ions, right? So which ions produce precipitate with aqueous ammonia? They are what? Zinc ions, white precipitate, aluminum ion, white precipitate, lead 2 ion, white precipitate, copper 2 ion, blue precipitate, ion 2 ion, green precipitate, glycolidetic green, uh, ion 3 ion, reddish brown precipitate, yeah, reddish brown precipitate. All right, so all these ions produce precipitates with what? Ammonia. But when the ammonia is added in excess, it is only this guy that does what? Dissolves. It's only the zinc that dissolves in excess ammonia. Dissolves in excess ammonia. In excess ammonia to give a colorless word solution. So based on our analysis up there, this guy here is copper two. No, sorry, this guy too dissolves. This also dissolves in excess ammonia. Yeah, this also dissolves in excess ammonia to form what? A deep blue solution. To give a deep blue solution. Yeah. So these are the two that dissolve in excess ammonia. While the other one gives a colorless solution, this other one gives a deep blue solution. Yeah, it's expected because zinc gave a white precipitate. Well, copper 2 gave them a blue precipitate. So copper 2 will dissolve. Potassium hydroxide, potassium does not, potassium does not uh, uh, form any precipitate with ammonia. Then ion 3 chloride, ion 3 chloride, say ion 3, okay. Ion 3 forms a reddish brown precipitate. Zinc carbonate, zinc carbonate will form a white precipitate, but zinc carbonate, zinc ion will dissolve, but ion 3 will not dissolve. The reddish brown precipitate of ion 3 will not dissolve in excess ammonia. So the answer is what? C. Which of the following graph correctly illustrates the ideal gas equation? What does the ideal gas equation say? A PV equals to what? NR what? T. And here, what's that? We are plotting a graph of what? PV against what? NT. So if we rearrange this equation, it means that PV is directly proportional to what? NT, right? Which is a PV over nt equals to what r which is what a constant a molar gas constant so so this means that if you are plotting a graph of pv against nt then the graph will pass through the origin right and the slope of the graph will be equal to what r which is a molar gas constant molar gas constant so which of these options gives us a linear graph that passes through the origin. A looks like the answer, but let's check other options. The answer is what? A. Actually, this is meant to start from the origin. The answer is what? A. Question 42. Question 42 says, which of the following phase transitions is most exothermic? When liquid is being converted to gas, what happens? liquid converted to that's freezing that's freezing right 
liquid converted to solid sorry that's freezing it is released right solid converted to gas this is sublimation it is gained here this one is an exothermic process this is an endothermic process gas to solid this is the reverse of this so let's just say desublimation some also still call it sublimation this is the reverse of this exo then gas to liquid gas to liquid is condensation it is released it's also an exothermic reaction so the most exothermic is when a substance is changing from gas to solid that is where the greatest amount of heat will be what released among these what options right which makes c the answer because that's if you are combining two processes in one question 43 says the substance with the least change in solubility with change in temperature is the answer here is what sodium chloride the sodium chloride that has the least change in solubility remember when we were treating part one of this series there was a question a similar question i could just say which one has the highest solubility at the lowest temperature and the answer was sodium chloride why because the solubility of sodium chloride is almost independent of changes in what temperature yes example sodium chloride is about 30 something 36 point had a little bit of about 36.5 grams or thereabout per dm cube at zero degrees celsius and and at about 40 grams per dm cube at 100 degrees what celsius the change here is very small compared to the what the wide temperature change or the white change in temperature the change in the solubility of sodium hydroxide is very small we're talking about about 3.5 grams per dm cube. that's the change in the solubility over a temperature change of about 100 degrees what celsius which is very small compared to the solubility changes of these other salts you can check that up its solubility is almost independent of changes in temperature okay let's continue deviations from the ideal gas law are less at in other words under what conditions does a real gas act as or tend to behave as an ideal gas first of all, what is an ideal gas an ideal gas is a hypothetical gas it's a gas that has negligible coercive forces and also has what negligible what volume compared to the volume of the container right they have the intermolecular forces and real gases have significant intermolecular forces and also significant volumes right compared to the volume of their containers now the conditions under which real gases can behave as ideal gases are high temperatures and low pressures high temperatures and low pressures at high temperatures the molecules of the real gas acquire sufficient kinetic energy and move far apart from each other as possible and as they do so the strength of the intermolecular forces weaken and becomes negligible right likewise at low pressures they are far apart as possible the volume of the container becomes very large at low pressures and the volume of the real gas become, becomes what? Negligible compared to the volume of the word container. So at high temperatures and low pressure, real gases tend to behave as ideal gases. But the opposite will now be the conditions under which they deviate from the ideal gas law. And that will be what? Those conditions will be what? Low temperatures and high pressures. Low temperatures and high pressure. Because at low temperatures, the gas molecules have very low kinetic energies and they come closer to each other and when they get closer to each other there is an attraction the force of attraction between the molecules is what's significant right so the intermolecular forces between the gas molecules are pronounced and at high pressures the space the space around the gas molecules is very what small and because the, the gas molecules are crowded in this space they become closer to each other and the intermolecular forces become significant 
and the volume of the gas molecules also become what significant so at low temperature and low temperatures and high pressures they tend to deviate from ideal gas behaviors question 45 which of the following reactions is best considered to be a decomposition process and in decomposition reaction a reactant let's say a breaks down into what b plus c and in cracking long chain hydrocarbons are broken down into shorter chain hydrocarbons in the presence of what heat right and the catalyst right let's example c18 broken down to let's see c 5H12 plus C3H6. Alkenes are always the byproducts of what? Cracking. So here now, one reactant is being broken into what? Two products. So that is more like what? Decomposition. In polymerization, small molecules are joining together to form very large molecules of a large molecular mass. So that's not decomposition. In hydrolysis, a substance reacts with water and gets broken down into two different word parts. So that is not a decomposition because you have two reactants and two products. Then double decomposition is not also a decomposition process because you have two reactants, two reactants react combining by exchange of radicals to form two products form two products so this is not a decomposition reaction because this is a general formula for composition reaction so cracking is the most correct answer question 46 the chemical formula of ammonium trisocarbonate 4 is ammonium trioxocarbonate 4 co3 2 minus valency 1 CO3 2 minus valency 2. So when you attend these valencies are exchanged, since this is a radical NH4, this will be in what bracket NH4 2 and C this is more or less like CO3 1. But one is always invisible, so we will remove that bracket. Remove the bracket so it becomes NH4 2 CO3. That is uh, option C. Question 47. An element in group 1 of the periodic table would form an insoluble chloride. That is a lie. Form an acidic oxide. That is a lie. Group 1 elements are metals. So, and metals don't form acidic oxides. Metals form basic oxides. All chlorides of group 1 elements are soluble. Because group 1 elements form soluble what? compounds produce hydrogen from cold water produce effervescence with a base that is not correct it's not correct produce hydrogen from cold water yes we have answered this question already yeah sodium plus water because of their high reactivity they would readily displace hydrogen from cold water right to form what alkali Form alkalis. Yeah. So that's why they are called what alkali metals. They are called alkali metals because they displace hydrogen from cold water to form alkaline solutions. So the answer is what? C. Okay. Question 48. The solution of potassium chloride is potassium chloride a solution of potassium chloride potassium chloride is a product of what potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric what acid a strong base and a strong acid and each of them would cancel out themselves in the solution that the hydroxide ion from this base or alkali and the hydrogen ions from this acid would cancel out what themselves giving us what a neutral solution so which means that potassium chloride does not undergo hydrolysis okay which of the following processes is exothermic 
okay exothermic that's which of the following processes involves the release of heat energy right of course combustion combustion reaction burning of petrol in a car engine that is an exothermic process or an exothermic reaction melting of ice cracking of lubricating oil fractional distillation of petroleum are all endothermic processes because heat is taken in to perform this word processes or to carry out all these word reactions so the answer is what d now the last question the last question in this series is question 50 which says ammonium chloride was heated with an aqueous solution of a substance x to produce an ammonia gas x is likely to be whenever an ammonium compound right is heated with an unknown substance to produce and produces what ammonia gas right that unknown substance is what is a base or an alkali because that is one of the chemical properties of a base it's just similar to the way travels carbonate for salt reacts with an acid to produce what carbon four oxide and water whenever you you add an unknown solution to a carbonate four salt and a gas is produced carbon four oxide gas is produced then that unknown solution is what is an acid or is an acidic solution similarly for bases whenever an unknown solution that to ammonium salt and heated and ammonia gas is produced that unknown solution is a base or an alkali so based on that which of these guys is an alkali not just a base but an alkali of course the answer is what sodium hydroxide sodium tetrazosulfate six sodium tetrazocarbonate four sodium chloride are all what salts they are all salts and not alkalis or bases so this brings us to the end of our series on the correction to the 2025 january february wire chemistry if you know that you had learned anything or you've gained value hit the like button subscribe to this channel and leave a comment we want to hear from you want to read from you want to hear what you think about our videos about our tutorials and if there's any other thing that you want us to do please don't hesitate to drop it in the comment section or if you have a question that has been bothering you on chemistry feel free to drop it we'll definitely attend to it so until we come your way next time i remain the science chef thank you and god bless